of the eclipsed conformation of C2H6 ethane. So we can see the, uh, the front carbon and its three attached hydrogen atoms. And also we have, on the back side, we have, again, the second carbon along with the three attached hydrogens. Now, the general shape of the eclipse form is very reminiscent of a trigonal prism. And in fact, the dimensions of this particular model were taken uh, to be to scale as determined by a DFT calculation using the B3LIP 631G star method. So not only does it give you the general shape, it's actually to scale. And this particular model we are going to use to show just one of the important symmetry operations of the group D3H as uh, exhibited in the eclipsed conformation of ethane. We can notice that, again, that if we rotate, we make a C3 turn, we turn by a third of a rotation, that if we do that, not only do the atoms line up on top, but they actually line up on the back side also. So it, it simultaneously demonstrates the C3 operation for the substituents of the front carbon and the back carbon at the same time. So that's one thing that's very useful. Another nice thing about a model such as this is that we can turn it around and we can actually look at the substituted ethane from the back side. So we're free to look at it from either side. Another innovation which I incorporated into this particular model was to allow us, if we look down the axis, it looks exactly like a Newman projection. So this type of a model is helpful in helping a student link the image that they recognize from a Newman projection with the three-dimensional structure of the molecule itself. As a further help, the substituents are labeled with uh, Roman letters, and they're also color-coded. So we have both the color and the alphanumeric label of the substituents. So that helps to combine all the images at one time. So the important thing here is we have C3. We rotate by a third of a turn. Everything lines up. Also, if we go in the clockwise direction, we see that C3 to the minus 1 is also a symmetry operation of the point group. So therefore, for this particular molecule, which belongs to the point group D3H, the highest order rotation axis is AC3. Now suppose that we change the substituent pattern of our ethane so that on one of the carbons, we replaced it with three fluorine atoms. So this would be 111 trifluoroethane. And we want to determine what the point group symmetry of this particular molecule would be. So the first thing we often would like to do is to look for and to determine the highest order rotational axis. And we see that in this particular case, we still have a C3. If we rotate by a third of a turn, third of a turn, we see that all the atoms line up. Not only do they line up in the front, they line up in the back. Now in this particular model, the further development from the previous one, I've actually shown the position of the two carbon atoms uh, that make up the substituted ethane. And again, these carbons are located uh, in the accurate position they are to scale for this particular molecule. So if we have, we change the substituent pattern so that at one of the carbons, if the three hydrogens have been replaced by three fluorines, we still have a C3 high order rotation axis. As it will turn out, this is no longer D3H. We've reduced it down to C3V. So if we replace it, we end up with point group C3V. We have a C3 high order rotation axis. We have three different vertical mirrors. We'll see later on the vertical mirrors go along this line, along this line, and along this line. We have models which will demonstrate vertical mirror planes, and we will see them shortly. 
here we have another model of 111 trifluorethane. The purpose of this particular model is to show where the vertical mirror planes lie in this particular molecule. So if we see along here, as the model opens, this is where the vertical mirror is. The vertical mirror goes along this line. It mirrors this side into this side of the molecule. And we can see that more clearly if we open it up, we can actually see on the inside where the two chlorines, uh, the two carbon atoms, excuse me, are located. Also, what this model does, it helps to reinforce the student's uh, use and familiarity with using wedges. So we see in this particular case, the wedges are, are dashed. So these particular wedges are showing that the fluorine substituent in the back is behind the plane of the paper. The fluorine substituent that's right here is in exactly the same plane as the carbon atom is. So that's why we use a, um, a single ordinary line. Now, if we look at it from the outside, it's cut away so that we can get sort of an invisibility view. We can kind of look through and see inside the molecule. We actually have a solid wedge. This solid wedge shows that going from this carbon atom to this fluorine substituent actually comes towards you. So it's coming towards you from the paper. So in this particular type of a model, not only do we have a three-dimensional view that is to scale of the molecular structure, we also use dashes and wedges in a way that helps the student. And last but not least, at each end of the molecule, we have a Newman projection. So we can see the Newman projection from this end, and we can see the Newman projection from this end. So we had mentioned previously that for this particular molecule, it belongs to the point group C3V. Well, we can actually see one of the vertical mirrors. And the, each of the vertical mirrors essentially works the same way. If we rotate by a third, this is where the second mirror plane would be. And if we rotate again, this is where the third would be. So each of the three vertical mirrors essentially looks the same. So there was only a need to build one molecule to one model to show it. But the model combines several different viewpoints and several different pedagogical features to help uh, the student better understand the uh, geometry of this 111 trifluoroethane.